Okay. You are on. This is perfect. Hey, everybody. Come on in. This is exciting. Okay, well, when you come in, guys, if you could, in the chat, if you can just say where you're from, um, that's always fun to see how many different people we have here and all the different places that people are. Um, and maybe even like what the weather's like there or something like that. Um, let's see. I'm watching that chat. Also, Lindsay is here with me. She is uh, being the, the MC for this. And so she can monitor it. Uh, Lindsay, the chat, is it not working? Is it more like Q&A? Is that right? you need to be watching? Yes, the chat is disabled. So please put your questions and answers in the Q&A. In the Q&A. I got it. Okay, I'm watching it. Sweet. Okay. Oh, man, so many places. Chicago, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Okay. Cold and foggy. Oh, boy. See, I'm, I'm in Dallas right now, Dallas, Texas, and it's warm. But if I had, if you talked to me a week ago or two weeks ago, it was like zero degrees. Uh, so we're just thankful it's warm here now. Okay, um, this is awesome. Yeah, we got like more than 500 people. This is perfect. Okay, well, keep coming in. Um, it is Dr. Seuss's birthday. And so we're gonna draw some Dr. Seuss stuff here in a bit. Oh, awesome. Lucy, you're from Poland and it's snowy. That's awesome. I love all of this. You guys, I am so grateful for this technology. Isn't this awesome that we can be like all over the world and getting to learn to draw together? It's perfect. And I think that's what's exciting about, uh, you know, being creative, about drawing is that it really helps to have more people with you, you know, cheering you on, telling you to uh, how to do it better or to give you ideas or to just most of the time just to tell you that you're doing a good job. And so what a cool opportunity we have to be here all together and cheering, cheering each other on to be creative. Oh, I'm just watching all the places, Georgia, Ohio. Maybe you can put in there too, if there's a favorite Dr. Seuss book you have or a favorite Dr. Seuss character or um, maybe why you want to draw like Dr. Seuss. That could be cool too. So I'm just scrolling through it. California, New York, Chicago, Connecticut, cold, Irving, Texas. That's like in my backyard. Hey, neighbor, come on in. This is perfect. Okay. New Hampshire. Okay. Well, let's, um, oh, there's lots of raised hands. Hey, Lindsay, when people raise their hands, is that going to, can you talk to me about that? You there, Lindsay? Yes, it's just a wave to you. Oh, just a just wave. Just a hello. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if like want to ask a question. I'm like, I could pick on you. Okay. Perfect. Well, let's get started. Let's get started. We're gonna have a ton of time and I'm so excited for this. Uh, I wanna make sure we're seeing on time. Okay, so Dr. Seuss, drawing like Dr. Seuss. Um, well, I guess first I can introduce myself. Uh, my name's Josh Talbot and I'm an illustrator. I work for Michaels here in Dallas, Texas area. And um, we thought it'd be really fun to do a class about how to draw like Dr. Seuss uh, today, just kind of celebrate his birthday. And uh, what I do for Michaels, um, I get to draw the, a lot of the characters that come on our products. So things like Santa Claus, or uh, if it's a dinosaur or whatever it is, we get to draw those fun things. And um, I feel like there's some creative principles that we use that I wanted to kind of uh, teach today, learn together today, and then kind of do it through like the lens of Dr. Seuss. Um, I wanted to focus most of, the, most of the time on drawing your own Dr. Seuss creatures and characters and not so much on drawing the ones that already are. Uh, we can still do that and that's fun to draw, you know, Cat in the Hat of the Grinch because they're great characters, but um, I think it'd just be really instructive or fun to, I wanna see what you make. What, what, you know, what, what new things can we, can we learn? Almost like uh, I think Dr. Seuss would be the most grateful or excited if he could see people taking his work and making even better things or newer things from it versus just copying what he's already done. I think that's more of a fun thing to do. So that's what we're gonna do. So uh, Lindsay, if you wanna switch the camera to, the, uh, to show my hands in the paper, let's do that. Okay, so um, I've got like a little guy here. I just drew him up today uh, just to kind of, we're gonna draw some things like this. Um, I've got a couple books. I, some of my favorite Dr. Seuss books. 
Um, particularly, I mean, who doesn't love the Grinch Stole Christmas? I mean, we have it, such a good character, and we might talk about him more in a second. But I really wanted to look at this one. This one's Dr. Seuss ABC, and um, there's just so many different character designs in here. They're just wonderful. Um, kind of just the way that, like this guy with his long neck and these tufts and these puffs, and like this tiger, I believe, that has stripes, and the way that he draws the legs. Um, and here there's all different characters. Obviously he draws humans, but I wanna draw some more of his, his uh, you know, creatures today. Um, there was a certain one here I wanted to show you. There it was, yeah, like this lion. Oh, so, so good. I want, I want to draw some fun things like this and that's what we're gonna do, okay? So to start, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some shapes. Oh, like, yes, this is, this is a good place to start, okay? So get your paper out. Okay, and we're gonna just draw some shapes. And what we're gonna do, I've, so as far as supplies go, I've got some pencils, some pens, I've got erasers, uh, pencil sharpeners in case, and then I've got these two, just like some Crayola markers, which I think these will be a lot of fun. We're gonna use those. But let's start out with our pencil. And one more thing I wanna show you, this is probably my favorite pencil ever. I've got these ones, but this one is just thick and dark. And I think it'd be best to show up here on the, on the screen, okay? So this guy, look look over here at this guy. I wanna like talk about maybe how Dr. Seuss would have approached drawing this guy, okay? So we're gonna draw just like, I feel like if I look at him, if I'm thinking of basic shapes, I feel like he looks like a, like a pin, uh, like a pinball, uh, like a, what do you call that? A bowling pin, kind of shaped like this and then gets skinny up here and then, up again for his head, right? And then at the bottom, you can, and if you wanna draw, please draw with me. That's what, that's what we're here to do. And then at the bottom, he has these big feet, right? And see, when I'm drawing like this, I'm not trying to make the lines perfect by any means. I'm just kind of scribbling, that, scribbling them out there to get a feeling for, for what that shape is, right? And then he has this great tuft uh, pom pom thing going on for his neck. So I'm gonna kind of like put that in there. And mine looks a little different than Dr. Seuss's and that's okay. And then, so he has this round shape, but he has like this other shape kind of on top for his cheeks. So I'm gonna draw that there, okay? Now, you notice I drew through, it's called it drawing through. That's something that we talk about when we're drawing things. Um, these shapes in here, see, I, I have my eraser. I'm gonna erase out some of these lines. I knew that I, I like basically drawing through means that you put the shape all the way through. You're not just drawing, you, you, you know that you can erase later, basically. But see, now we get our shape. So, and then the best part of Dr. Seuss, and I started this, higher in the paper than I probably could have, but obviously all these great feather shapes, right? And so again, we're just thinking shapes right now. I don't wanna to worry too much about like how those feathers that he drew, all those little pieces of the feather, I'm just getting the basic shapes. Okay, I know if I'm going too fast or if there's anything uh, you guys, um, if, yeah, if I'm going too fast or anything like that, let me know. There are a few questions on the supplies you're using if you just want to go over what type of pencil and paper that you have yes, or that you recommend oh, or alternatives. That's great. Yes. Oh, man. I was, I had stopped scrolling the, the Q&A and I'm, there's lots more comments here that I didn't need. I was like wondering, like, no one's saying anything. Can I use a Sharpie? Yes, I see that. Is that a needed eraser? Because I have one just like that. Yes, this is a needed eraser. Okay, let me talk about some supplies for a second. Let me put something heavy on this book. Okay, um, so this is called a kneaded eraser. It's a lot like uh, clay, kind of, and you, um, that's what this is. I've got, and this is just like a, a rubber eraser here. Um, Sharpie's perfect. So yes, I'm, I'm starting with pencil, um, but you can start with anything. I think, oh, and someone says, do I want the card paper or the regular paper? Sorry, guys, I'm just seeing this. I'm so glad that we're talking this. So I've got my regular paper here. And the reason being is that I'm just practicing, right? This is like not my final drawing, 
I've got my card paper over here. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of get things figured out here on my regular paper. And then I can jump to my card paper just because it's a little bit more expensive. Um, let's see, you're going too fast. Can we start over? Okay, so yeah, this is a stop for a second. So you can see, can you slow down? Oh, I'm so glad I look at the chat. I, was, I wasn't looking at it. I was looking, I was looking earlier in the chat. Okay. Um, just scrolling through a little bit more. The Butter, Butter Battle Book. Yes, there's so many good ones. Okay. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll uh, we paused for a second. Um, so that was good. So back to the, back to the drawing here. Um, was, and if there's any other questions, let me know. Is it fine that my card paper is rainbow? Yes. Yes, anything, anything goes. That's, uh, I want to make as few rules as possible. How do we draw the hair? Okay, let's get back to it. So just really quickly, I want to sketch in his arms. And he has them to the side here. I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to make one arm up in the air just for fun. And I feel like Dr. Seuss did a lot of people with their hands kind of like this, kind of like, aha, like they're presenting. So I'm just going to draw his hand like that. And again, it's scribbly, and that's OK. Because I'm just figuring stuff out right now, OK? Um, I'll draw the, his legs right there. And I'll draw in his eyes. Now, this is important. Dr. Seuss eyes, I feel like, are probably one of the most um, unique things that he did. He did a lot of closed eyes, where they're just like U shapes, with three little eyelashes on each one. If you can see that from there, OK? And little nose, so little. I'm gonna make it like a like a upside down U. And then his mouth. And I feel like Dr. Seuss did a lot of cheeks, kind of like a little C-shaped cheek, like that. And then we know there's gonna be some hair here for his for his other for his cheeks, I guess you'd call them there. Okay. So that's about as far as I want to go with the pencil. Um, so now, this is the cool part. This is the cool part. What I'm gonna do, and I don't, I don't think I'm gonna jump to the card yet, the card stock. I'm gonna keep, it, I'm gonna keep on my inexpensive paper because I think we're, just still, we're still figuring stuff out right now. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it under my inexpensive paper. Now you don't have to do that. This is, this is one way that I think helps me um, hide a lot of those scribbles. Um, you can draw right on top of it if you wanted. And I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna start to get a little, what you talked about is rainbow cardstock okay? Um, and I said it is. This is where I think it's okay um, because I'm gonna use a different color here. Um, can we stop and show the pick of drawings so we can catch up? Okay, I'll make sure them here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll cover this so you guys can see it. Okay, so there's our, there's our little character. So while you're looking at that, I'm gonna choose a color of my marker. I'm going to use these colored markers here. And I'm going to use a dark one so you can all see it. I'm going to use purple. Okay. Yeah. Can we use pencil color? Yes. Yes. All is good. And that maybe that, that's what we'll talk about next. Um, here, let's, let's do this. Let's, while this is here, how about this? Right here on this piece of paper. While we're looking at this and people are catching up, I want to talk a little bit about um, what's called thick to thin. Okay. Thick to thin, and that's why I love markers like this so much, because you can go thin like this. You see that? And then you can go thick like that. Isn't that awesome? Thick to thin, thick to thin, thick, or thin to thick, I guess. Thin to thick, okay? We're gonna be using that a lot while we draw uh, the Dr. Seuss thing today. Um, I also wanted to cover um, two more things here. Hatching. We're gonna be using hatching today. Hatching is where you, you'll see more of this, but if I'm shading his belly, it's easier to probably see here. This isn't my final drawing, it's okay. If I'm shading his belly, I'm gonna put little lines in there to make his belly. Does that make sense? Um, Dr. Seuss sometimes even would cross them like that, okay? So we might we, we might be using that today. So, uh, Thin to thick, thick to thin, that's the first thing. Second thing is hatching, okay? And we're gonna be using hatching today. 
And then the third thing I want to show you guys while we're waiting is um, the eyes, the Dr. Seuss eyes. So I showed you them closed. They were that U shape with the three um, eyelashes, right? Also, when he does open eyes, open eyes are super cool. He'll do an O shape. And then um, I'll show you with the pencil first so I can show you with the pencil. What we, what I think a lot of us do when we draw eyes is we'll draw like a circle like that and we'll call it a day. Um, and then if we wanna get extra fancy, what we'll do is we'll get our eraser in there and we will erase part of that circle to make it look like it's shiny. See how I did it there? I think that's how a lot of us sometimes draw eyes. Dr. Seuss, he figured out a really cool way to draw eyes. What he did, and where's my knee eraser? What he did is he would just draw another U shape in there like that. So it's almost like a line that shows you that little shiny part that's called the highlight, but he'd make it one big, one big almost U shape in there. Isn't that neat? I feel like if you can draw eyes like that, instantly your drawings look like Seuss, Seuss drawings. Okay, so let's try to remember those three things. We've got our thick to thin, thin to thick. We've got our hatching, and we've got our eyes. Okay, so now that we've looked at those things, I'm looking in the chat. Again, this chat's interesting. We use brush pens. Yes, please use brush pens. Brush pens are the best. I've got a couple here um, that I could show. Um, and I'm, seriously, anything works because that's, I guess that's the thing I could show here. If you don't have a marker, don't stress all is well, because look at, you can draw th thick to thin with a pencil, right? You can draw your line and then you can come in here and thicken it up. See, you can make thick to thin with a pencil. So there's no reason that you need it. You don't need so markers work, great. Brush pen, great. Pencil, great. Crayon, great. I think everything works. Um, there are a lot of questions now coming in to explain what a brush pen is. Oh, brush pen. Uh, yep, I can show you. There's a couple of kinds. Um, where is the, a brush? Ah. Oh, well, I'll show you. So this is a marker. This is not a, this is not quite a brush pen. This is a marker with a brush tip. And so it basically, a brush pen, um, is they, they make pens out there that have hairs, just like a paintbrush on them. And they're, it's just inside a marker. This one is a felt tip brush pen, but it's just where the mar end of the marker moves just like a paintbrush. Whereas the Crayola markers, you know, this tip doesn't move very much. It's just kind of stuck where it's at. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay. And another question that you see here, can we make our own eyes? Yes. Yes. Seriously, I, I want, our goal today is not so much to, I guess we're drawing like Dr. Seuss, but I want us to just walk away from this class just feeling creative and being able to draw whatever we want, really. So let's draw this character and then we're going to draw some, we'll draw some more characters. Okay. So you can see how I covered it up. I put another piece of, of inexpensive paper on top. And now let's draw Let's start drawing, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go really thin at first, like this. Do you see that? So I'm just gonna draw his hairs, the, hair, the, the fur of his, of his body, okay? And so I'm gonna come back and sometimes I might even not connect the line. You see that? I just made a line and then connect it. Um, Hope you can see this okay. Okay. Um, see, I'm just I'm putting in some hair, some fur there, kind of just coming in. 
And now I know where my lines are because I can just, I can just follow what I drew before. Um, I'm going to make his shoes a little different than what was in our over here. I'm going to make his shoes a little different. I, and then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make his shoes different again. I remember uh, in How the Grinch Stole Christmas, he has like these kind of cups at the tops of his shoes. Let's draw those. Okay, but let's keep going. So I hope that makes sense. We're just kind of coming in, drawing his fur. And something else you can think about too. Um, we don't want, like, uh, I guess on the outside of this arm watch, I did these, these furry lines. On the inside of his arm, I'm not going to do so many. And that's okay. I feel like that if you do um, these furry lines everywhere, then he just starts to feel like a fluff ball. But if we can put some, some smooth ones in places, then, then we're okay. I did the bottom of his glove. And again, with the thick to thin thing, I tried to make it a little thicker right there to show that there's a little bit of a shadow almost in the bottom of his glove. Now, one thing I noticed too about Dr. Seuss, which is great for us, he is not very uh, detailed when he draws hands. So pretty much anything you do is okay. So I'm just gonna do a thumb shape over there and some shapes over here. And if you notice, a lot of Dr. Seuss creatures have hands like that and that's okay. That's easy for us, right? Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna draw the other glove here. And again, I don't have to be detailed about his hand. I'm just gonna stick it in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back over here to the top. I'm gonna draw that little fluff ball stuff. And here, when you talk about how you draw feathers and stuff, we'll start talking about that here. I feel like Dr. Seuss, what he does is it's just almost messy. Like there's not a lot of rules. Just draw some shapes. Um, and, and something we talk a lot about when we're doing um, drawings at work is um, balance. And so if you have something that's like, kind of like, uh, what am I trying to say? Let's see. So this fur I put around his neck. It's kind of crazy and messy. And his body is a little less messy. So there's a contrast there. You have a messy, crazy thing here and a, a cleaner, not so messy shape here. So maybe try to think of some contrast while you're drawing. Okay, and then there's the bottom of his head. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna come in for that fur. I'm just gonna kind of start making some lines. Look, and I'm kind of not following my drawing exactly. That's okay. There's his cheeks. And see how we built those shapes, right? I mean, if you look back at what we drew, we built those shapes. So, now it's almost like we, we've done all the hard part and obviously it's to do the fun part. And that's why we, were, we weren't we were too worried about being messy under there. And if you're someone that's not putting a new piece of paper on, if you just drew on top of your pencil, that's great because you can always erase your pencil. So, um, Lindsay, are there any important questions I'm missing? There are a few requests to add, you know, to show how you could add a bow or a bow tie or even a shirt. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let me finish this face and let's do that. Okay, so I did those closed eyes. Remember the U and I did them kind of skinny on the top and I went thicker on the bottom. So just like this, I'll do a big over or I'll, I'm not on this piece of paper. Let's see. I'll do it over here again. So remember, thin on the top, big on the bottom and then thin on the top again. That just shows that it has some weight, that the bottom of the eyelid is a little heavier. Okay, so think of that when you're doing it. Little nose, super little nose. And then his mouth, remember we do a cheek. 
And there he is. There he is. He's very proud, very proud. And there's little eyelashes. And with marker, I'm it's it's I'm really it's tricky almost to get that detail with this marker. So if you can't get it, that's okay to get that skinny. But there's his eyelash, little eyelashes. And then what was the question? Oh, a shirt and a bow tie. Um, let's see if we can get there. Let's see if we can get there. Let me, uh, I would say for a shirt, if I'm gonna do a shirt, I feel like I've already made, we'll, we'll do one with shirt. Let's be, we'll hurry through this one and we'll do one with the shirt. Let's do that. Let's just finish this, these feathers, okay? So I'm gonna do it similar to the way I did his fur. And you see, I've got re something else we talk about in making art is repeated shapes. So I've got some shapes down here for his feet that seem similar to the shapes I used for his fur up here. I'm gonna use those same shapes up here again. Kind of these sharper shapes, okay? And I'm gonna be kind of crazy with it. Oh man, see, I didn't follow my drawing underneath at all, and that's okay. Okay, whoa, he has a lot of stuff up there. If they make a mistake when using their marker, is there a way to fix it or change the drawing? Good question. Um, I guess it just depends there. We, if it's really, it just depends. There's special white paint you can buy that you can paint over certain parts or some artists will even like draw on another piece of paper, cut it out and glue that new part on top. For me, I didn't really intend to make the feathers this way. Uh, so I almost could say I did made a little mistake up here, but I just kind of went with it. So I would say, I'd encourage you to try to go with it. If you, if, if you're, if you were drawing your eye, watch this, watch this. It's gonna change here. Let's say I'm drawing my eye and oh my goodness. Oh, oh no, oh no, what have I done? I, I, oh no, this is, this is, this is horrible. What am I gonna do? The best thing to do is figure out a way to make it work. So watch what I'm gonna do. He's wearing sunglasses now. See, find a way to make it work. Maybe even like the shirt comment. You know what, what the heck, let's put a shirt on him. So like, I guess have fun with it. Don't worry about making a pretty drawing. You can, you can make pretty drawings later, but let's just have fun with it. So for a shirt, I just drew his sleeves in there and then the bottom of his shirt right there. There he is, he's wearing a shirt. And if we want to do a bow tie, maybe a smack dab in the middle of his shirt. He's just wearing it right there, a bow on his shirt. See, I, I, so I guess, yep, if you, and look at that, look at that. I don't know if it's, you can even see that, but see, I made a little bloop out there that I didn't want to do. That's fine. All of a sudden, his bow tie is a little bigger on that side. That's okay. So just don't stress. It's cool. Okay, so we basically got our guy. Now I wanted to show you a little bit of that hatching, and then we're going to move on to another character, okay? So to do that hatching, what you want to do is you want to think about how there's light coming in like from my, where my marker is right now, marker light coming in. And so there would be a shadow down here, right? Kind of like, I'll, I'll draw it on another piece of paper so I can show you what I'm talking about. So when you're drawing things, you want to show that there's light. Let's say that this is like uh, an, an orange, okay? An orange. And um, so what you want to do is if you have light, here's the sun. Coming in from here, okay, then you're gonna have a shadow over here. And if you're doing hatching, you can draw some lines and I'm gonna make them round so they go around the orange like that. See, now it feels like there's some weight here. And then if you wanna get super crazy, or, and actually not crazy, it's important, do a shadow. And if you're doing like Dr. Seuss, you just do some lines like that, okay? And all of a sudden that orange feels like it's sitting on the ground. Right? You want to do a little more back here. Okay. See, Dr. Seuss was really scribbly, and that's okay. That's good. And then, so like I said, sometimes he crossed his lines. And so you want to come back through here like this. And you can cross them like that. So that now our orange feels like it's sitting on the ground and it has a shadow. So. 
going back to our character guy. I want to show a little bit of shadow, not too much, because I don't want to take over the drawing. But I could put some lines down in here. And all of a sudden, he feels like he has a little bit of shadow, a little bit of weight, right? And it's helpful, too, because then it, with our shirt, which is a great idea to put that shirt in there, now all of a sudden, his shirt looks like it's a lighter color than his shoes are, or I mean, than his body is, right? I'll put some more, just a little more. Okay. And then, you know, I'm going to put a little dark, I'm going to put a thicker line here now. Because I think that makes it look like that shirt is, is um, on top of his body. And maybe a little bit of thicker line down here underneath the cuff of his shoes to make those look like they're a little bit. 3D, and then I can make a little bit, I guess I can make a little bit of a shadow under here. Maybe it's like he's standing on the ground. And I could go with some, just a little bit of shadow maybe under here. See a thicker line under things, all of a sudden it makes it look like it's 3D. A couple fur lines there. And we've got a guy. I say that we've pretty much finished this guy. Um, so let's, let's, let's go, let, let's, let's try another one. So my next, my next thing I wanted to do together is I wanted you guys to help me create a, a new character. So, um, that, that's why I like a lot of stuff that is in these books, like this elephant, for instance, like Dr. Seuss didn't, I don't think he was looking too hard about how elephants really work when he drew this. It's, it's just, he kind of did his own way. This yak, I don't know if yaks really look like that. I don't think they do. So I want to, and yeah, this was, this is a, a Knox. Uh, oh, there's a fox. I guess he is a fox. Anyways, it's pretty made up and it's pretty exciting. These turtles, if you ever look at turtle shells, they don't really do that very much and that's okay. So what are some things in the chat? Tell me. On the in the um, over here in in the comments, can you tell me some some um, some animals that we could draw? Where some what like what name? Shout out some animals. Where some different? Where some different animals that you'd want to see that we could draw like Doctor Seuss? Okay. Oh, sweet dog, fox, owl. Oh, this is great. Okay. Oh man. Okay. Let's put some of these together. Let's see if we can put some of these together. And, and you guys that are drawing along, see if you can do it too. Um, I saw a zebra. Oh, this is a great fox. Okay, let's just start, okay? So I'm gonna start with a zebra. I think that's, I want a long shape. So I'm gonna do a circle here. Almost like a hot dog shape, okay? I just started kind of middle of the page again. I probably could have gave more room, that's okay. And Dr. Seuss, I love how a lot of times when he draws the legs, he'll draw them. Um, almost like the person standing like a ballerina or something. I love it. So there it is. So I drew a leg in there, kind of like a, a little bit of a hint of a leg. And then the feet. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Do zebras have feet like that? I don't think so, but this one does. And that's kind of like what Dr. Seuss would do. He would just draw whatever he wanted because it just looked funny. So there's our zebra's feet. Now for a different tail, you said fox. Let's give it a fox tail. I'm thinking a big shape like this. What do you think? Look at that. That's kind of like a foxtail, right? And usually when I think of foxtails, I think about how they have that, that white shape up there, right? So this is the red part and the white part. We'll remember that. Okay, I'm looking at Missy's in the chat. Frog, turtle, ooh, dragon, giraffes, sloth. Okay, I gotta do, I wanna do something that's totally different from a, from a zebra or a fox. 
I'm seeing turtle. That's a lot different. Let's see how many we can put together, guys. This is good. Here, I'll stick this over here just in case you guys, anyone wants to look at it. I'll, I'll keep that over there. Um, a T-Rex. Ah, oh, so good. Okay, let's figure out something. Let's figure out something. These are all good, good things. You guys is, might look very different from mine, and that's perfect. Nothing would make me more happy than you guys is to look different than mine. So I thought of turtle and I thought of T-Rex. I like that. Pigeon, duck beep. Okay. So many things. Let's see what let's see what comes out of this. Okay. And I'm trying to think Dr. Seuss too, because because Dr. Seuss did a lot of cool stuff. So maybe. So when I think of Dr. Seuss characters, what, something that he would do a lot is he'd do a top portion, like this is where the eyes would go. And then he'd do another portion up here for whatever that is. if it's a turtle i'm thinking turtle or if it's a dinosaur let's let's try the turtle let's do a turtle dinosaur so i'm gonna draw it down there and up with a smile and then there's like that that's like the beak of my my turtle dinosaur that makes sense something kind of like that and then I feel like you have to draw a weird hair on the top. Again, I started a little bit higher in the page than I would have liked, but that's okay. Some weird hair. Perfect. And what is, I'm trying to think of some other ways we can get some other animals in here. Maybe, can we draw some wings? Let's put, I saw someone say duck over here. Peacock, let's get some wings, right? So how would Dr. Seuss draw wings? Well, I bet it'd be something kind of like this. Look at that, look at that wing. Is that cool? It almost looks like a griffin. A griffin's a cool animal if you want to look those up. Those are, those are fantasy animals. They, maybe they're on earth, maybe they're not. There's his wings. Okay, oh, and let's do some stripes because he is a, a, a zebra after all. So for his stripes, I'm doing, ooh, I see one, someone said one fish, two fish. Let's do, yeah, there's so many things, guys. I'll go, if I'm, I, I can maybe go a little faster and get more animals in. But I'll do some stripes. Ooh, and maybe, you know what? Maybe some scales. You said one fish, two fish. Those kind of almost look like feathers too. I don't know. We'll see what those are. But see, again, those repeated shapes, I love, I think Dr. Seuss used a lot of U shapes. So there's some scales or something. And then for his eyes, now we gotta use those, those classic Dr. Seuss eyes, guys. Let's make this one with eyes open. Okay, so there's his eyes. Okay, and then remember, remember that shape. And here's something, oh, here's something really important, guys, I like to do when I'm making a character. It helps them feel like they're alive. I like it to have them look at you. So instead of putting that pupil right in the middle, I'm gonna put it over here on the side. Like he's looking over here, like, what's that? I feel like it helps him feel a little bit more like he's looking at something, you know? Something else that you can think of that I'm noticing that we didn't do super well here. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Dr. Seuss, you don't have to, don't, don't worry. If you, if you drew it like I drew it and I'm now erasing and you're like, I'm using a marker. I can't erase. Don't even worry about it. It's fine. But I want to make this beat just even a little bit bigger. That was something I noticed that Dr. Seuss did a lot is he did um, really exaggerated scales. So like little things, like a little head next to a big beak, you know? Ooh, and while I've got a big beak, we might as well make it striped like a toucan beak, right? I mean, why not? And there's that Dr. Seuss cheek. So it's kind of looking Dr. Seuss like, right? Nice mouth open a little bit. I'm gonna open it up real fast to this turtle over here. I just wanna see if there's anything else that he did with his turtle faces. These are all ones asleep. I think we're doing pretty good. Okay, well, let's... His characters usually have fun names, right? So maybe we could think of a, a name for this new character. Oh, Lindsay, that's perfect. Ooh, ooh. Maybe, does anyone want to put some in there? 
like a zizzer, zazzer, zuzz. That's one of the ones in here. Think of some weird, some weird sounds. Oh, there's so many, so many more animals you guys put in here. I want to do all of these. Would you guys be okay? So be okay. Be thinking of the animal. Be thinking of the animal name, and part of me wants to just go on to do another animal. Can I do another animal instead of do, do, putting the marker on this one? Can we just end this one here and put him over here, and then we can try another one? Let's do that. I think I think that sounds fun. We'll let this one stay there for a second, and think of some think of some names for this one. Look in the chat, so to see if I can see him. Oh, there's so many things you guys are writing in here. This is great. Um, could you lower that drawing? I can't see it. There are a lot of names coming I in. See I, I need to scroll more. Where we are have they? Zuzer and ZZ, Baziz, Kalahaluba. <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> Zootich, I saw that. Where's the... There's so many I came in, like they're going so fast. Yes, they are coming in. Um, Cadrazia. Cad, okay. Oh, yep. I, Cala, it, it, it went off the screen. It's going too fast. Slimy, okay. blimey. This is Zomaz and Angela Zebra. Vicky <laughs> Zama. This is great, guys. Canapaloo. This is so good. A zibicorn, a lubbyer. See, and then I think that then it, that's the important thing when we're going to draw this stuff, guys, is just to have fun. Like, don't, if we're having fun when we're drawing, we're going to make better drawings and then if we're too serious about it. Let's, let's do another one. What if we do, um, let me go back at some of these other animals that you guys had, had uh, talked about. Um, maybe put some more in the chat again. Yes, there, there were chickens, octopus, pigs, dolphins, um, cats, dogs, unicorns, bears, fish, okay. owl, snake, wow. ducks, panda, tiger, pelican. Okay, my mind is about to explode. I hope you guys are too. <laughs> this, is, this is so many things. So I started with just like a bird body, or maybe it's a, we'll see what this is. I seem to start drawing a little bit. So maybe like a duck, a duck body. And then maybe, uh, let's see, you guys said cat. Do we give it a cat tail? I'm trying to think. Where's some, and these legs. I want to look again at the way he does those legs because he does, remember when we looked at the, at the elephant, he does these great weird, knees that bend. I want to do some knees like that. So we're going to do some some crouching legs kind of like that. Okay. And I think we talk sometimes in, when we talk about sh making shapes, um, we talk about making happy shapes or scary shapes. So that's one thing I want to show you about Dr. About, uh, um, the Grinch. Do you see how many sharp shapes he has? His eyes come to points. His hair comes to points. I mean, there, his fingers come to points. There's all these points around him. Yes, there are some round shapes in there, and that helps us feel like he's not all bad. But Dr. Seuss did that on purpose to help him feel like a bad guy. Whereas like this one, we don't have as many sharp shapes in here, so he's a little bit of a happier guy. So I just want to point that out when we're drawing over here. I'm drawing happy shapes. I'm not drawing too many, um, too many scary shapes. So I'm thinking a crazy tail. I saw a peacock. I feel like that's a tail you don't see very often. Maybe a cool feathery tail. Again, no rules, right? I really that's that's why I want us to feel like not too worried. Um, let's let's pick a different animal for the arms. What's let's see. Someone said dolphin. Do we do dolphin fins? Or fish fins? Hmm. I don't know. I want to pause it. I'll I'll come back to the arms. Let's do something. I think those tufts of fur. Remember the little pom pom things of fur. Those are important to do. Let's let's do that on the neck. 
then hmm, for that head, what can I do for that head? Octopus. Oh, oh, oh maybe arms. I'm, I'm going there. I'm going to octopus in the arms. Someone said octopus earlier. And octopuses do have a lot of arms. I don't, I don't want to get this looking too crazy, but I think we already went there. We're crazy and that's okay. Let's have him waving. He's a happy, happy creature, whatever he is. There's a suggestion to add a kangaroo pouch. Of course, how could I forget? And maybe like a little baby version of this thing in there. Please, here, I have an idea. Look, let's erase a little bit. And let's put that little creature, we'll have it sticking its arm up over this arm here. And then this arm can be coming in, kind of give him a snuggle. Like he's holding them in, like give them a hug. That's a great idea. So we'll, we'll draw him a little bit more. We better, we better draw the head of something so we know what the head looks like. Let's see, let's do a big beak. I saw a duck bill earlier. Okay, and we're, man, we're running out of space. You know what, actually that's great because we're talking about different scales and stuff. So let's draw a little head, just a little head there. And then let's draw a big beak. Something kind of like that. And I heard pelican, maybe one of those cool pelican beaks that have a big chin, Ooh. like that. And then why don't we do, besides we're running out of room up here, instead of all the feathers going up the top, let's just make the feathers come out the back. So his head's like tipped back. See, and again, guys, on the whole thing about making mistakes, don't worry about it. Just go with it. Like I could have been like, oh no, crud. I'm at the top of my paper. I guess we can't put feathers on his head. Oh well, but no, we just made his head tip back and it solved the problem. So just don't be too hard on yourself. It's great. Now I wanna, I wanna find, make sure I have some room up here for his eyes. I'm gonna make this one with the eyes closed again like those U-shaped eyes. There, look at that. And now we know what the face is gonna look like of this little baby over here. So why don't we, you know what, here. I thought I was gonna have him go under it, but watch, you'll see. Let's have his neck coming all the way up here. And his little head right there. And look, oh, repeated shapes, repeated shapes, which is great. It, it makes us feel like the drawing has a little bit more continuity, a little more harmonious. I'm trying to think of a simpler word. Anyways, and there's the mouth of our baby one. And let's have it looking up at its mom. So here, let's see if I can make some eyes open here. And it's getting really tiny, so I'm gonna, I know we talked about that she sh that U-shaped eye thing. We'll see if we can do that. I'm gonna do some little feathers on the baby because it's just little. Okay, that's hard to see. I realize that's hard to see and that's okay. Maybe this is the one, where, where, where are we at on time? Let me see, 4.50. Maybe this is the one where we turn it into a, a more detailed drawing. Any, let's see, I'm, I, uh, I've been watching the chat for a second there. Hey, Lindsay, any comments people are making? Um, there's one suggestion to add cheetah spots. Of course. How can we forget? I love drawing cheetah, cheetah spots because you kind of draw just a wobbly circle and leave the middle of it open. Just again, don't worry about making mistakes. Wobbly circle, it doesn't matter. And then put a couple spots in there that are just solid spots. 
We have a lot of comments that these characters should be in one of Dr. Seuss's books. Oh man, I, I wish. Well, you know what? It's too late for that because he passed away, but what if I put them in my own books, right? Or you guys can put them in your books. We got a big future ahead of us. Okay, well, hey, let's do this. I want to, with a little bit of time that we have, I want to see if I can turn this into a little bit more of a finished drawing. So I didn't, I didn't jump onto the card today. I'm just going to keep on, well, you know, yeah, I'm just going to keep on the inexpensive paper if you guys are okay with that. I think there's, there's no, no problem there. And uh, I'm going to use a different color. Use red. Okay, and I love that, I guess what makes me excited about using, um, about going to this place now is that it can be as messy and as scribbly as we wanted it back there. We were, we were still trying to figure it out. And now we can come back here and, and just make some more decisions. And and uh, again, let's, let's still be loose. It's not that like we have to be perfect. So, oh, forget that. Right there. Okay, let's do this. I don't have a ton of time. See, I'm using those shapes. I'm not connecting them. See, I want to make sure you guys can see that. Uh, this way, uh, this way. There we go. You see that? They're not even fully connected. And that's okay. And you see how they're doing the thin and then the thick? It helps it feel like fur. And that's okay. And I kind of like drawing fur because it's easier. Then I don't have to make smooth shapes, right? Now, one thing I like that Dr. Seuss did too is he made his characters look like they were wearing a coat. Like their fur kind of, um, I don't know what you want to say, folded, just like they're wearing a, a sleeve or something. So there's that thin to thick thing again, right? And see, I'm putting that fur thing on his knee. I didn't do it there. It's okay. I guess I'm doing it kind of where it makes sense. There. And then we'll do the, it's belly, then back. Oop, I got a little close. I don't know if you can tell from where you guys are at, but I got a little close to the head of that little animal inside his pouch, but we're okay. There are a few questions if they can just color the drawing that they already made or if they need to trace over it. Oh, just color the drawing you already made. Seriously, don't even worry about it. Um, yeah, I, that there's, please. I think for me, one thing I'm learning guys as an artist, as a person that draws, I feel like 90% of the drawings I make are me figuring stuff out, right? So like, I'll color right on it. it. Doesn't matter. Like I'm just trying to get a feel for what this drawing, this creature is going to look like, and if I'm coloring right on it um, versus trying to make it look pretty or perfect, uh, that's probably better. So please, by all means, no rules. See, I made it a little thicker in there to make it look like that there's some weight with those feathers. And then let's come in here. Let's do this arm, these tentacle arms. Now, I, ooh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I was going to say, I've never seen tentacles on a furry creature before. And what if we do this? What if we make it look like this furry creature is wearing like a coat or something? And then his arms are coming out of the inside of it. What do you think, huh? It's got like this furry suit on. That looks really good. See, I and I love it. We didn't we didn't plan on that. We didn't plan on any of this. And it's because we just decided that there wasn't rules. So we just went with it. With our rules, right? I mean, I guess some of the rules we used were like the thick and thin, the Dr. Seuss eyes. Those are some things we used, but I guess I'd call them more tools than rules. Okay, now let's now let's draw this this head of this little creature, the little baby one, looking up at its mom. I might be a little bit more careful here. Because 
We have a question on how you would add a background, like a furry hill or a river. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Let's let's do it. Um, I, I want to get. I'll get there before we. Let me just finish this little face. Okay. This is getting really tight in here. That's okay. Let's. Look at that. Can you see that? It's hard to see. Looking up. Oh, tender, tender. And I think that's something else, guys, to remember with your art, what you make. Like you've got a message, right? Like you're making stuff and it's going to make people feel something when they look at it. And so be positive. Like I want people to look at my art and go, oh, or that's cute. Or that reminds me of my mom. Or that reminds me of my kids. Like make good. Make, make art that makes people feel good. I feel like that's one thing Dr. Seuss did a lot. I feel like his, his books help you feel good. Okay, there's the other side. Let's see, background, I will get there. So there's arms. Let's put it. Maybe there's other tentacle coming around. I don't know, we'll see. And then, its head, and at this point, I'm like, oh yeah, we have to do the fur. I want to keep the fur going, right? Because, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever feels best. And then during the top of the head, I did a little, I broke up the lines a little bit there to give it kind of like a fur feeling. There are a lot of great comments in the chat. They are having so much fun. Good. Oh, good. Good. I'm so glad you guys, because this should, this should be fun. This is the, that's the point. My little daughter, she is five. She loves art and drawing. And it's, I think it's her way of just being, of just expressing herself, right? Being happy. Like you want to sing a song or dance a dance or draw a silly drawing. It's like all the same, right? So there's his face. Let's keep going. I'm going to do those little proud eyes. This is a proud mom. A proud mom of this little thing in this pouch. And be thinking of some names, guys. we got to name this thing, too. Yes, great idea. Put them in the Q&A. Yep. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. There it is. And maybe let's give it two little nose, nose holes right there. I think. I think we can start on that background. I might add a little line in here because when you do tentacles, a lot of times they're like, you know, different color on the back as they are on the inside. So I want to kind of maybe show that. We have fuzzy duzzy, octobird. Octobird, um, I love it. <laughs> Gibby Gabby. Gibby Gabby. Tint of feather. Tint to feather, love it. Look at this, guys. The thick to thin, the thick to thin is great on leopard spots and cheetah spots. You just kind of go thick and thin, thick and thin. And, and again, we're not being perfect with it, right? We can just kind of make some blobs. Look at that. I'm not going to put them all over. I feel like that would be kind of too crowded. Let me just right there. A couple more up there. Look at that. Oh, that's perfect. Now, let's let's see. Where are we out in time? Are we out in time? We're getting close. Oh, it's 5 o'clock. It's 5 o'clock. Okay. Well, I guess just ending. I know we're a little late, but you do a background. Same principles, right, of the feathers and the fur. There's the grass it's standing on. And then if I'm going to move a background, um, just think of a thinner line because I want it to feel like it's way back there. So I'm going to do a thin line. Bring it up like that. And uh, palm trees, we didn't even get to the palm trees. Dr. Seuss loves to draw crazy palm trees. So you can draw some crazy trees in the background there. And all of a sudden, it feels like it's standing on, in the ground, like in, in a scene, right? And we didn't have to do that much to make it a scene. 
And uh, one more thing I want to show you too, motion lines. Those are cool. You can put that. Now it feels like those tentacles are moving a little bit. Um, there's so much more we do here. Uh, we could go back in and we could do a little bit more with the, with the, um, what do we call it? The hatching lines to show that there's some depth here. I mean, there's, there's lots we could do, but um, thank you so much for coming guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you um, can go now and draw some um, crazy uh, Seuss characters yourself and um, that you just feel even beyond Dr. Seuss. I hope that you feel motivated just to have fun, to be creative and, and make decisions, um, creative decisions without worrying too much about if it's perfect or not. Um, and that you feel motivated to make art that makes people happy, that uh, can put a smile on their face and can remind them of good things. And I think if you're doing that, then you're um, using the talents that you're given and you're able to, to bless the world. So thank you so much. You guys have a good night. We'll see you.